everybody. Just wanted to show you, this is what I got all for today for chilling at home. Little shorts. <laughs> this is my home attire. This is my body. Oops, let me turn you around here so you can see me. Oh, gonna drop you. Hooey. <laughs> Get situated here. Whew. Still working on this hair a little bit. Anyway, I wanted to talk to you guys about aging a woman and her body. Whew. That's a lot. So today, as of right now, I'm 71 years old. I'm going into my 70s. This body of mine has changed tremendously. <laughs> I'm a plus size woman now. I've been a plus size for a few years now, probably since 2012 when I retired and I was kind of inactive. You know, I tried to exercise. Uh, I had joined a gym and then the pandemic hit. So I was, I didn't go to the gym anymore because, you know, it was the pandemic. Uh, I did exercises on a video chat that I did with my sisters and uh, nieces and uh, and my daughter. We did that for several months and then it just kind of died out. I should have stuck to it. It is what it is. I want to say that the women in my family are all kind of small frame. They're short. Uh, there's not too many that are tall. But most of them are small frame, which I mean they have smaller breasts, the smaller hips. They're kind of straight up and down, just a little little curve to them, but I wouldn't call them petite. There might be a few that would be considered petite. Now me, myself, I'm five foot three. When I first uh, remember my weight is I was 103 pounds, and it was probably because you know, they always weighed us and did our height for our school record. And I probably was under 100. And then I went to 103. It was like, oh, I'm over 100 pounds, you know. <laughs> Whew, those were the days. And I remember my first measurements that I took. And it was probably due from an article uh, maybe in Glamour Magazine or Cosmo back in the day that a perfect figure was your bust. Your waist is 10 inches smaller from your bust and your bust and hips are the same measurement. That's what they called a perfect woman's figure back in the in the 60s, you know, mid 60s. I was a 34, 25, 35. That was my measurements. So of course I was 34 on top, not 35. I was like, okay, I don't have the per perfect measurements but when I look back on it it was pretty damn close to perfect measurements now oh sorry sticking to the couch <laughs> but I was a 34a yeah so I'm short I was five foot three I was weighing like 103 pounds so I don't call myself petite because I always had chubby fingers uh my I always said I had a big head, you know. I I just felt like I was just squished, you know, but nothing was petite on me. In fact, I couldn't even buy petite clothes. If I bought them, they just didn't fit right on me. The pants didn't fit right. So I would just get regular pants. And because I wore heels, either I would cuff them up or, you know, cut them or I wore heels with the the jeans or pants or whatever. Now, I stayed probably 103 pretty much throughout, you know, school. Uh, I did get up to, you know, I remember 110, 112. I was like, oh, I'm getting up there. And I think by the time I graduated high school, I was like 115. Two babies later, I was, you know, Two babies later, I was weighing around 120, and my best, my best, my breast had went from, uh, I was like a 34A, and then I went to like a 
36 B cup after my daughter, eventually up to C cup. But I stayed probably 120 pounds for most of my adult life. You know, uh, when you're younger and you've got kids, or even if you don't have kids, and you've got a job, you're getting up in the morning, you're going to work, you're, you know, running around, then uh, seem to stay off of you a little more, even if you don't exercise. Just running around, getting up every day, walking, you know, that keeps your weight maintained. And uh, when I was 30, I had a hysterectomy, and I only had one ovary left, so I didn't go into menopause or anything. When you have a hysterectomy, your body goes through this because the baby-making machine is stopped. So all the stuff that goes with the baby-making machine inside of you stops, and it affects your body in different ways. So uh, it was a medical decision that I had a hysterectomy. I had already decided I had a boy and a girl. And that's all the babies I wanted. I didn't want no more. That was enough for the times. It was enough to handle. And uh, so I was already in compliance with not having any more babies. So I get that done. And when I got my hysterectomy, it was a struggle after that to try to maintain my weight. You know, where I had a job where I was standing all the time and moving and everything. Then I have a sit down job and I'm not moving as much. I can see the weight kind of coming on, and I fought and fought to try to keep that off. And uh, so from my 30s, you know, until now, I've been, it's like been a struggle uh, to me, I feel like. And But gradually over the years, as I got older, I see the weight just keeps coming on and on and on. I haven't really changed my eating habits. Uh, I try to walk as much as I can. I am, uh, I'm kind of isolated during the day. I mean, I have no vehicle, uh, you know, so I'm here all day. I've got to make the best of what I do here. I started uh, doing my weights. I have some, uh, I think they're two and a half pound weights each, little dumbbells. So I do some of those and I have these other little weights. They're probably... I don't know, probably not even a pound each. But they're good to have in your hand when you're walking or doing stuff. So I've been trying to do those exercises every day. I have some leg exercises that I had when my I had my hip repaired. That's another thing. You know, you get older and all this stuff happens. Now, I didn't fall or nothing on my hip. It's just arthritis. Arthritis is a very terrible thing to have because it just eats away at your muscles or your bones and stuff it, and so my hip has arthritis in it over here on the left my left knee has arthritis my back has arthritis and i had arthritis up here i had my hip replaced because the arthritis had just ate it away you know i it was i was in so much pain and i didn't want to be on pain pills anymore so we did the surgery. A few years later, I had my shoulder. I just probably was doing an exercise, you know, with the weight behind my head. And I thought I had overworked my arm. Come to find out the arthritis had just ate away there that it was rubbing. And so I had to have all that socket replaced. So it's pretty decent. I mean, you know, I can't lift it all the way up like I would like like this one, but I can get it up there. So uh, I had an excellent therapist and uh, helped me get through all that. Just as your body ages, you know, it's like I could, uh, just for instance, you know, I was squatting to get something out of the vegetable drawer, the refrigerator over 4th of July when my brother was here. And I was going down several times. I'd squat and go down and get whatever I needed out of the vegetable bin. And, uh, you know, I felt my right knee kind of pop a little bit. I was like, what? You know, so <laughs> just from doing little squats like that, just bending down, getting the refrigerator, I must have 
came up too fast, went down too fast. I don't know what it was, but then I felt a little tinge in there. And it's to the point that it's kind of achy around the backside of my knee. So, you know, I put some heat on it, you know, ice, icy heat or whatever it's called. But as you age, you know, uh, I guess if you were in a exercising routine, you know, all your life, it might be easy for you to just keep exercising. Because I never really exercised. I was always a smaller size, 120 pounds. Uh, and I, you know, I did little things here and there, but I, I don't know. I guess I just felt like I didn't need to, you know. Now, my mom always did, uh, I don't know if you remember Jack, Jack Lane, I think, Elaine or Jack Lane. He would exercise on TV and my mom would do his exercise and she'd always say, oh, you got to do exercises. And I thought, no, I don't, you know, but I probably should have, you know. I mean, I've walked uh, all my life. I've walked here and there and I still walk, you know, um, to me, that's the cheapest way to get weight off is to go out and walk. And I used to walk around the neighborhood. When I had the, my dog, we'd walk all the way around. Good. I could, I could walk. It's boring, you know. So I guess that's why I quit it because, you know, it's kind of boring just walking by yourself, you know. I don't have no walking partner, let's put it that way. Uh, I mean, just now my sister is retired. Now it's kind of too hot for us to go out and walk around. So for now, you know, I'm trying to do things at home. You know, my uh, weight exercises. A little later, I'll do some leg exercises. Uh, I've been, you know, getting up from a chair. These are old lady exercises, but they work, you know. All exercises is repetitious. If you do the same thing over and over again... You're going to get results from it. You don't have to uh, pay big memberships or anything like that. You have to be consistent. And that's what I'm trying to do with my weights. Just every day do my weights, you know, over my head. Because I know over your head, get your heart rate up. And I've learned a few things over the years. I do appreciate all the plus size women on YouTube that have... Uh, shows what they've gone through or they they show the fashion that's out there they try on clothes i mean i've watched a lot of those made decisions and i've gone to walmart and found the same item that they were uh modeling and i say oh yeah so based on that person their size I can judge what size I need, and I don't have to stay in the store long. I can go there, oh, there's that there's that sweater, or there's those pants. And yeah, I like those, so I'm going to get, oh, they're in my size. So I really appreciate, like I said, the plus-size women. And I'm really proud of the plus-size women, because at one point, uh, like back in the 70s, there was no clothes for plus-size women. A lot of the women that were bigger wore what they call moo's, And it was just a shapeless dress. It might have long sleeves to cover all of this. But it was just a long dress. And they were colorful and different patterns. But it was just a moo, No shape to it whatsoever. Finally, uh, and, and I know as I started gaining weight throughout the years, you know, like when I went up to 150, 160, I was like, you know, I got to go to another size of clothing. But a lot of the stores were limited to bigger women. You had to go to, you know, these plus size specialty stores that were uh, more costly unless you could catch it on sales. You know, I went to a few plus size stores and I couldn't really afford to buy anything. Plus, some of the clothes, I just thought, didn't look right. It wasn't my style. Let's put it that way. I don't know what kind of style I am, but my style comes from the 50s, 60s, and 70s. So I'm kind of laid back. I don't know. I like wearing dresses. I like wearing pants. I like wearing jumpsuits. I don't have nothing that I don't like wearing, okay? 
I the only thing I would say is that I need to wear a dress, a, a shirt or dress above my knees or all the way to the floor because if I wear a dress uh, mid length between my knee and my ankle, it makes me really look stubby. So I have to look at stuff like that, like oversized. Uh, now they have oversized t-shirts. Well, because I'm still, even though I have extra weight on me, I still have, uh, I guess, a smaller frame. I don't know. But if I get something that's too big on me, it, it looks too big. It doesn't look uh, constructive. It looks disarrayed, you know. And so I always have that balance. And I think because I'm short, that I, you know, from my waist to my breast, it's it's like that much space. <laughs> maybe, maybe that much, you know. I have no waist area or, you know, that area there above my waist. <laughs> waist. I have to be real careful about what kind of tops I wear or dresses. Uh, I like the little tops that have the ruffle around the bottom, you know, and like that. You know, and it is more difficult as you age to, and this weight gets on you. It's harder to get off because our metabolism has changed. You know, I'm older now. And even though I had a hysterectomy in my 30s, I still had an ovary. So everything was still kind of running okay there. And the doctor said, you know, when, when you go through menopause, that ovary will stop. And I think it's kind of stopped now. So once that ovary stops working, then everything shut down. Your body goes through another change. I mean, I went through crying and being upset and you know my son would look at me cross-eyed and I would start crying and he was like oh my god you know it was it was hard to have conversations because I, I was so uh, emotional they think men think you could control it but when your emotions are all whacked out you can't control it and it puts you in kind of a damper you know you're like oh, 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 I don't want to do all this you know, and it, you have to really smack yourself to get out of there. Going forward, I am at this weight. I'm probably another person. I probably got a whole nother person size on me. I'm not going to say my weight, but I know my breasts are now a D cup for my little A cup that I used to be way back in the day, or even my C cup. You know, B cup. They're very big, you know, uh, and cumbersome. They're not perky at all. So yesterday I told my son, I'm going to go put my pajamas on. And he goes, oh, I thought you had your pajamas on because, you know, I'm at home, so I have casual clothes on. I said, well, they are casual clothes, but I'm going to go put pajamas on so I can take my bra off. He goes, well... You didn't go nowhere today, did you? I go, no. He goes, well, why wear a bra if you're at home? Makes sense, right? No, it doesn't because my breasts are flat now. They're, they're, they lay right against me. So all underneath here gets stuck to my stomach. And that's, that's so uncomfortable. Then it sweats under there. Oh, it's just terrible. At least... Having a bra on kind of gets that material, so you're not really stuck there. I still sweat under there, but I'm not stuck to my skin, you know, and that makes a difference. But when I put my pajamas on, you know, then it's like, oh, little little relief because bras are a pain in the butt. I, I don't care if you got the best bra in the world, you know, the straps may dig into you. You're like, ah. Straps may fall down, uh, you know, or they're just cumbersome. They just, you, you always know you have that on and it's just cumbersome, you know. I really like uh, the little tank tops with the shelf bras in them. To me, those are perfect for old women like us that just need that little cloth between our breast and our skin so they don't stick together. 
but they're very hard to find. They're not as popular as they were, but they should be as we age and as women age and as our, our baby making machines start breaking down and closing shop for good, it throws our body into this turmoil, you know, sweating and hot flashes, but things happen to you. You know, like I sweat only on one side of my head. It's like this side of my head, and it'll come down here, it'll run here into the crease of my eye, and come around and come here sometimes as my nose, like my nose is running. But it's not, it's coming all the way from the sweat down and follows like the crevices in my face. <laughs> And so sometimes I think, oh, my nose is running, oh, my God, but it's not, it's my sweat, you know. And I'm like, this side of my head would be dry as a bone, this side would be wet. Even now it's like that. I don't know why. And I've asked the doctors, they don't, oh, well, people sweat. Well, yeah, but do they sweat like this? You know, it's just, it's just weird, you know. And I think every woman, every woman goes through this change of life, they call it, uh, differently. And uh, they say you should always look at how your mother went through it and you would probably go through it the same. I know my mother had a terrible time going through the change of life. It was, uh, uh, she, she would tell me like she would stop her period and then she would be going to work. She took a, a train to work and you know, she would just start bleeding and it would just run down her leg and she would have to go back home, get off the train, go back home, change a, a while before she actually uh, quit completely. But she had a hard time with it. I, I've known women that thought that they had went through menopause. They thought everything was over, maybe three or four years. They didn't have a period. All of a sudden, out of the blue, they had a period again. It, it's very difficult what women go through when our baby machine starts breaking down. Our bodies go through all kinds of things. And one of them is uh, this metabolism gets lowered. Uh, you gotta eat the right foods to try to keep that up. Protein, uh, your vegetables, and your fruit. So I've been trying to really do that, uh, in fact, I got a little book here that I got free, uh, Downtown Las Vegas. It was just, a uh, says Downtown for Anything, and it's just a little journal. So, I started doing, uh, writing down everything I eat. Now, I'm not counting calories. I'm not, if I know what the calories are, I might write it on there. But I'm just, uh, documenting what I eat and when I eat it, and if I really, you know, then I can look at it and say, did I really need that piece of candy? Did I really need those chips? Or, you know, maybe I should have not ate that. So I think this will help me uh, look at what I'm eating and try to eat, you know, properly, I guess. You know, not, not just randomly. The other thing uh, I need to exercise. I need to move more because the more I don't move, it seems the more uh, my body tends to deteriorate because it's getting older. I want to be able to walk. I want to be able to sit down and get up. You know, I've got to practice those. Now, there are a lot of exercises for older people. Like I said, people may say, eh. That ain't going to work out for you. That's not going to help you. But like I said, it's just doing the stuff over and over again. Once you once your body gets used to that being over and over again, then your body starts adapting to it. Before I started going to the gym and when I had retired, you know, when you're retired and you don't, you know, it was suddenly... I didn't have anything set up or plans or what I wanted to do or anything like that. So I was staying up late at night. Uh, I was doing genealogy or I was watching, you know, my shows at night because I'm the only one that wanted to watch the murder shows. So I would watch my shows when the guys went to bed. Uh, and I was staying up to maybe 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. 
But I was getting up at 9 o'clock in the morning. Every day, 9 o'clock in the morning. When I started going to the gym, I think I went there maybe a month or two months. And my body started getting into that effect of going to the gym and working on the treadmill, working these machines. I woke up one day, it was 7.30 in the morning. And I could not go back to sleep, no matter what I tried to do. So I got up. After that... I could not sleep past 7.30. So exercising does affect your body. I mean, it affected me that way that I couldn't sleep any. It was like I had this energy, get up, get going, get your day going. And I kind of liked that. I paid attention to that. I knew that exercise is what made me do that. So you have a lot of good benefits from exercise. But at this stage of my life, 71 years old, I have to be real careful uh, not to injure myself, especially because I, I have never really been an exercise person. You know, when I do my weights or I do them up like this, I'm always, you know, being conscious of what I'm doing, how I'm breathing, because I don't want to injure myself and then I'll be out of commission for a while. Now, everybody that exercises always got to take caution because you could pull something if you don't warm up, you know, good enough or you don't cool down after the fact, you can strain yourself. I'm not the only one that thinks of that, but I think as you get older, you could injure yourself a lot more than if you were younger. If I was 20, 30 years younger, I'm not going to injure myself as badly, you know, just doing weights like this, than I can now. Now, if I turn my arm a certain way, I could twist it. Oh, you know, I can't use my arm for a while. So the difference, I think, between being younger and older. And that metabolism, that is a crazy thing because once your metabolism slows down, it's hard to jumpstart that again. And it, it just takes the right foods, uh, right combinations of foods, pick that metabolism up. Now, tomorrow... I should be getting a little fit watch. I ordered that. And uh, I've been wanting to get, I had one before my sister gave me uh, for a Christmas gift or something. And it lasted me quite a few years. And then it just died on me. Uh, I couldn't charge it anymore. So I said, you know, I need to get me another one. When you have right there in your face, your accomplishments, what you accomplished, how many steps you took, how many calories you burned. It makes you feel uh, more aware of it. And you're like, wow, you know, that that worked out. Or no, that, I used all my energy doing that, but I didn't have the same effects. So you could make your exercising for you to benefit yourself. And I love those little watches. I love uh, how it shows how much I sleep, deep sleep. So when I get that Friday, I sh it should get here Friday, then I'll do a little demo on that and show you guys all what it looks like. It had very good ratings. I got the watch and these little, uh, let me show you right here, these little protectors. So I got three of these. I got the two things for 40 bucks, so that wasn't too bad. And like I said, the watch uh, has great reviews, so we'll see. We'll check it out tomorrow and uh, see how everything goes. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going full strength on doing my exercise. I was doing it three times a week. Now I do it every day. I have a little alarm on my phone that goes off. It says exercise. So even if I'm doing something and I don't do it right then, I do it right after. So I'm trying to make sure I do it at least five times a week. I'm going to do some leg exercises, some squats. And uh, we'll see how everything goes. You know, what kind of roadblocks I run into. Because, <laughs> you know, and it's just too hot now. I can't go outside and do anything. So I might as well do it in my house. I can do jumping jacks. I can walk back and forth here in the front room or walk around my house. I have like a circle I can walk around, you know. So I can get steps in and, you know, exercise. So I'm, I'm just going to do that. Just make the most of what I can do in my home for free. I, I do have to say that uh, when I last 
just a few months ago, I went and got all my blood work. You know, you have to do that. Maintenance. Military calls it maintenance. So I go in. I get all my blood work done. They check everything. And all my numbers are really good. The doctor told me they, they were excellent. There was only one, you know, say it should be uh, the high is five, and I'm like a three. So... He said, I'm still good at it, but it's still, you know, it can go down a little bit. But I was just so happy because a lot of things that I've started doing, I see the effects of it. You don't see the effects right away. One example is like, if you ever take a vitamin E uh, supplement, it takes one year for that vitamin E to have any effect on your body. So you have to document, take pictures of how you look, just keep document, but you got to stick to things. You just got to keep doing it. And the things I'm doing now, the supplements I take, I take a collagen powder, I put in my coffee. I think all that contributed in a year or so that I've been doing it that lowered my numbers drastically. And I wasn't crazily high before, but I was always, you know, at those borderlines so now I'm way below that and that's better so I know at least my I have this weight and to me and I'm not dogging any any plus size women or any other women that are struggling out there this is my story this is what I feel and this is what I'm going through you always have to go by your by what you are and what you feel good at because uh that's why a lot of girls get in trouble media stuff because they see these thin girls or these girls with big boobs or these girls with big lips or you know they're they're just not satisfied with their self they they try to do stuff that's against how they really feel the way I dress the way I exercise and the way I want to look is based on me only, not anybody else, me. And because I'm short, and because most of my life I was, you know, in that 120 pound range, the weight I have on now is too much for me. It's, it really is. And I, I had somebody say, uh, I don't really want to lose weight because then my face will get all skinny and it'll be all wrinkly. Now, she's more worried about wrinkles in her face because when you're fat, you know, you got all this, it pulls it, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> that she was more worried about getting wrinkles on her face than she was about maintaining a good weight. And that's the point. you got to maintain a weight for yourself. And like I said, I appreciate all the plus size women. They've taught me plenty of things of how to look, how to do things, what to wear, where to buy things, you know, the cost of things, and different little things that they may do, exercise-wise, walking-wise, whatever. Uh, collagen is something that I learned from watching other girls and, you know, putting the collagen powder in your, in your coffee in the morning. I love it. You know, my hair, my nails grow, my hair grows. I want to just thank everybody for, to include you in my journey to, uh, I don't want to be 80 and I can't walk because of my weight. I don't want to do that. That's you, you know. If you're a real thin woman, you know, small woman, that's you, you know. We shouldn't uh, try to make it like we all need to look this way, you know. I've got the Renaissance in October. That's one of my goals. To kind of knock off some weight, I ain't going to even say how much. I just want to knock off some weight that I feel, because we walk so much around there, and I don't want to be tired and, you know, <sighs> it's hot. I just want to kind of walk and enjoy myself. So one of my goals for this year is to drop some pounds before October. I think it's October 15, 16, somewhere around there, mid-October. Mid so I got a good three months uh, to maybe knock off a few pounds, 10 pounds, five pounds, you know, 
three pounds, whatever it is, I want to see progress, see some weight knocked off by the time I go to the Renaissance. So that's my goal. I think I've rambled too much on here. <laughs> oh, Lordy. I'll keep you guys posted and uh, maybe you could give me some tips or I could give you some tips and we'll go through this uh, journey together as an older woman that finds herself overweight metabolism's probably down so we got to work on all this and with that i'm gonna let you guys go and i'll see you next time alligator bye <laughs>